let's revise complete settlement geography first of all let's see what is settlement geography it is study of how people or societies aggregate and live in urban or rural conditions and associated elements like land use pattern infrastructure development and problems so why is settlement geography important uh, and what is the relation between settlements and geography first of all settlements are very rarely static so they are dynamic uh, and therefore they grow which is interest for in geographical studies and uh, man environment relationship is very important theme in geography and settlement uh, is a <coughs> indicator of that elements of culture and history are there in the settlements and uh, how lands are organized plan uh, and organized that is the land use planning is in there in settlement geography therefore settlement geography is concerned with study of spatial patterns of human activities now Doxiodes he gave three elements of a settlement which are the homogeneous parts like house, farm or population composition, special part like a temple or monument, this is generally one or two only, and the circulation elements which are transport like a road and rail. So these elements are very really static, therefore they are dynamic and they keep on changing. Next we have types of settlements. First type is based on census town or statutory town. A census town has a density greater than 400 persons per square kilometer, population greater than 5000 and 75 percent of the male are in non-agricultural activities. A statutory town is uh, called so because it is said so by a law or an institution for example a municipality, a cantonment board or a nagar palika. Now comparing rural and urban settlements, the infrastructure here is poor, here it is very good. Uh, here the main occupation is agriculture and allied sectors here we have manufacturing services sectors land use is uh, <coughs> highly unplanned here it is a planned land use here um, the culture is traditional and uniform here here it is cosmopolitan and dynamic high ethnic identity and very <coughs> poor ethnic identity because uh, because of high migration the diversity will be high in urban areas here the traditional uh, construction type with the local materials is built here better and modern designs with the better materials is used here now based on the compactness we have village and hamlet here number of families living are thousands here only 110 to 50 all the families are not related in a village and um, they are all related in a hamlet the most important activity is agriculture here it is pastoral activities strong social hierarchy is seen in the village whereas uh, Hamlets are not seen in India, rather they are seen in Europe and North America. But in India, in some hills and deserts, uh, hamlets can be seen. Now, these are the villages with high population density and they are large hamlets are here and there. So, if number of uh, villages are <coughs> more than a uh, number of hamlets, it is a compact settlement. And if villages are less than hamlets, it is a dispersed settlement. And if it is in between, it is a semi-compact. So, the compact and dispersed comparison, density here it will be high, it will be low. And number of hamlets versus villages, it will be uh, villages will be more here, hamlets will be more. They are large in size, they are small in size, they are concentrated and these are scattered. So these are generally seen in northern plains, coastal regions and fertile developments. These are seen in desert seals, Antarctic, Savannah and Central Asia. Coming to semi-dispersed, if a compact settlement um, due because of conflict or population growth, they uh, people are moving away from the compact settlement, it can become a semi-dispersed settlement. Uh, or if a dispersed settlement because of road or something, the people are coming and aggregating here, it can become a semi-dispersed settlement. So this is a transition settlement, semi-dispersed. Next we have patterns of rural settlements, these are three types, rectangular, circular and amorphous. First rectangular, these are the most common because they are the most convenient. Because rectangular farms are easy to farm and uh, perpendicular roads give the best accessibility. These are generally seen in UP, Bihar, Indus Prince and West Bengal. First pattern, we have the checkerboard pattern, we have, we have roads perpendicular uh, <coughs> 90 degrees and we have farms and houses here. So this is the most common one. Next we have the hollow rectangle, the center area is open one, it is generally a large tank in temple towns of South India or a grazing land or influential house of the influential person and settlements are seen around, around it next we have linear or ribbon settlement around a, a along a <coughs> road river or rail the settlements expand along one axis there are three variants of this the first variant is arrowhead where there is a confluence of two roads uh, it is developed in the confluence area and next we have the there are uh, two roads uh, <coughs> at a cross junction we have the settlements here and with the, if it is star shaped because two main roads it turns into a complex shape next one the circular it is seen when there is a congregation towards a water source or a for security concerns for example oasis in deserts or a security purposes nil because of the tribal conflicts this can be seen in bundelkhan rajasthan region malwa kach etc so the variants are first central hollow around a well the settlements are seen like this so the central area would be a well or a lake oasis a fort or a grazing land if the roads converge also a radial pattern or spider web pattern can be seen here 
so they are converging at the center or the nebular shape this is for the security reasons this will be most secure but access will be accessibility will be low in this one so it is generally seen in forts and uh, <coughs> ancient cities next we have the arc, arc or horseshoe shape this is generally seen at the spurs of the hill or edge of the lakes so like this uh, at the edge of the, you know, the edge of the lake so these are seen in himalayas and central hills so these are the variants of the rural settlements next we have morphology of settlement settlements what is morphology it is the internal structure of a settlements that is how is a settlement organized within so the elements are how is the land use <coughs> what is the land use pattern orientation of the transport network social segregation on basis of caste race religion and class and architecture what is the design used and what is the building materials factors influencing the morphology we have side factors or the natural factors like soil slope climate etc history and culture proximity to other settlements uh, connectivity deliberate planning by government and land rental land rental is dependent on all these factors so some of the side factors are <coughs> can be seen from this in rainy or snowy areas we have slant roof in dry regions we have flat roof in rainy areas we have veranda in grasslands we have thatched roof hills and hard rock areas we have stone houses in flooded areas we have stilled houses in warm areas there are taller houses and in cold areas we have shorter houses next we have uh, rural morphology single most factor important uh, affecting the rural morphology is the agricultural land use so this is the main factor uh, most it will be the rectangular venus because they are most convenient and uh, social segregation is very strong in rural morphology because <coughs> uh, especially the caste and communal segregation higher and richer caste they generally live in the center of the villages and uh, lower caste they live in the periphery of the villages next we have the elements of modernity like uh, roads and rails and admin cent administrative centers next we have uh, urban morphology the definition is internal structure of the cities about land use pattern transport architecture and social segregation so rural versus urban morphology these are more diverse more dynamic and more elements of planning involved heavy influence of history and culture is seen in india for example from the ancient history we have mandapas uh, medieval we have domes and gardens taken british we have rails and civilians and modern planned extensions so the history influence is very high on urban morphology urban morphology is one of the most studied aspects of the settlement geography especially in chicago school in 1920s uh, burgers and parks they are sociologists who told about the influence of social dynamics through history on urban morphology that is social conditions they <coughs> manipulate the history and which in turn it takes how the mor urban morphology is we have five models in urban morphology which are concentric zonation model by burgers and parks sectoral model by hyatt multiple nuclear model by harris and ullman exploded city model by watson and uh, urban realm city model by griffin ford